Hey, it's Jeff. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about cost-effective alternatives to using the Moss Bowl. And that's simply the reason why I don't use them is they can be quite expensive. Even if you make it yourself, the DIY method, or if you buy them as a uh, prefabricated or pre-made pole, they can be quite expensive. So I'll show you the few alternatives that I use in my collection, some of my thoughts ab about them, uh, which one I would recommend and just kind of go from there. I'm not going to say one is better than the other. Um, it's simply based on preference and experience but there is uh, some alternatives to, uh, to the moss pole if it's simply a cost thing. Also, they can be quite messy to make as well. So um, yeah, I just, I simply don't use them. I know there's some very impressive collections out there and I think the goal for all of us is the same. You want your uh, plants to grow up the planks, poles, whatever you use so that we can achieve those large uh, mature leaves. So let's get into it. What I primarily use right now for my climbing plants is just simply a wood plank. I had an extra set of, these are actually bed frame slats uh, for my kid's bed. I just had an extra set sitting in the garage, so I uh, repurposed them and uh, used them as a climbing plank. And I absolutely love this method so far. I have my plants on planks over there, which I'll be making a video here hopefully soon, uh, kind of switching it up a little bit. Uh, right now I have the planks inside the pot and I know there is a chance for these planks to rot, but so far I haven't had any issues with it and I expect that I'll have to repot these plants before the boards actually uh, rot. So that is a concern or a downside if you use uh, the planks. You can also attach them or just leave them outside of the pot. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to be uh, switching this up so that I have all the planks on the walls. And the inspiration for that actually came from a viewer. He sent me some pictures on Instagram of his setup and it's quite impressive. He has the plants or the like the planks outside of the pot. So he has basically like a little platform at the bottom where the pot sits on. And then his entire wall, he just added some, um, I guess, wood pieces that the uh, plants can grow up uh, naturally. And it, uh, it actually looks really, really impressive. So that's kind of what I'm trying to go for, but I'm gonna be keeping it with these, uh, I guess, pine slats for now. I might switch it up down the road to something different, but I guess uh, a question I might get is what happens if the plant outgrows this plank? So my plan is to, so you can see, it doesn't quite go to the top of the uh, wall, which I want it to go to the roof. That's the plan. I'm going to um, basically use some of that uh, 3M sticky tape on the back. There's a Velcro version of it. So you have one Velcro that's on the wall and one on the back. So if you ever have to remove the plank, it'll be basically just be Velcroed on. So you can just take it off if you need it uh, to switch it up or remove the plant. So that's the plan for an upcoming video. I just kind of spill the beans. Yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, it might be in the next month or two, but uh, thanks to that uh, viewer subscriber for sending me his pictures. Um, huge inspiration to this project. So the nice thing about these planks is that the plants, they respond really well. Here is one of my golden pothos. You can see it's uh, getting larger leaves as it grows up, but it is already latched on to the plank. It's got a ton of aerial roots. It is super secure. It's not letting go. You can see they're all latched on. Um, the way I water this plant is, actually I'll do it right now, but I use my spray bottle and I spray the wood. And that way uh, these aerial roots will have that moisture and nutrients. I even fertilize it sometimes. I'll just uh, add the fertilizer in the water. I'll spray the back of the plank and it'll run down into the soil. I don't necessarily like soak the entire soil, but sometimes it'll come out the bottom of the drain hole, but I primarily water the plank. And that's the same thing you would do with a moss bowl is make sure that that moss stays relatively, I guess, moist so that these aerial roots will uh, latch on to, because that's what they're uh, searching for is the moisture and nutrients from the air. Uh, this is how they grow naturally um, up the uh, sides of trees, um, obtaining that moisture, humidity, nutrients, all that kind of stuff uh, from these aerial roots. So I just have this uh, larger spray bottle with this, uh, I guess, spray wand, and I, and I just water like that. It doesn't have to be like a huge amount of water, just so that the uh, roots have some moisture. And then you can see it just drains right down into the soil here at the bottom. So I might do that a couple times if it needs water. I just watered these the other day, so I'm not going to uh, give it too much water, but I might do that maybe once a day, once every two days, depending on the soil 
like moisture. If it's, uh, if it's wet or if it doesn't need to be watered, I'll just lightly mist it. That's all I do for watering these plants. You can see the soil is still a bit wet in this one. Whoops, I don't want to tear that very close. I'm just going to show this, the, like the width is about two and a half inches. I did look up online, uh, Home Depot, um, Lowe's, all those kind of places. They have the one by four uh, knotty pine planks. I think you can buy them for like six bucks or something like that. And they're, I think it was six feet long. So uh, a nice cheap alternative and it's, uh, there's no prep work for it. You just uh, stuff in the pot or you can uh, like tie it onto the back of the pot, whatever you like, just lean it up against the uh, uh, wall. But it is a nice, cheap, effective, uh, method and so far the results are I'm really impressed with them. Look at this pothos uh, like some of the smaller leaves or original leaves uh, They're pretty small, but you can see it's starting to uh, get these large leaves So yeah, I'm really impressed. I would recommend this wood plank method um, And it's funny because a little while ago I made a video on my uh, philodendron Brazil and without any assistance, it actually started to grow up my drywall. I'll insert a couple pictures uh, here as well to show you, but it did it naturally and it's drywall. I didn't tape it on or anything like that. And you can actually still see where the aerial roots latched onto. It was so impressive. It actually tore some paint off up there as well. But it was uh, really impressive because there's no light at the top, but it was training itself to grow up my drywall basically to the ceiling. So there was, there is no light source up there, which was pretty surprising. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty cool to see. I, I, I'm still speechless that it actually latched onto the drywall. There's nothing, there's no moisture. It's just paint and paper basically. So um, yeah, they're very resilient. They will latch onto, I find the wood planks really, really easy. Here's another golden pothos. This is uh, how I kind of started. I plant the, uh, uh, the cutting fairly close to the plank. So what I'll do is I'll uh, take the pot, I'll put the plank in, I'll put a little bit of soil in, I'll take a cutting, uh, place that in there close to the plank, and as it starts to grow, I will add these uh, little plant ties to the back, and that way it holds the aerial roots to the back of the board, and then after you water it, the, uh, the roots, look at this big juicy one here. Uh, the roots will um, adhere to the plank as it continues to grow. Look at the size of this stem as well. It's getting super thick. I love this one. The next type that I use is the burlap pole, and this is very similar to the look of the moss pole as well, except the, I guess, making of it is much, much easier. You can buy like a 100 foot roll of burlap for like $40. I looked at a couple places, Home Depot, Canadian Tire, um, and they're relatively, I guess, ex inexpensive. Um, for the amount that you can actually make. Um, so what I used is just a cedar pole, which I probably should have used a PVC pipe, that way it doesn't rot in the long term, if that's what you're worried about. And you simply take the burlap and just wrap it around the pole. You can make it as thick as you want. And then I just used the, uh, I guess, twine uh, that uh, came with it and uh, just made these uh, little burlap poles. Now, Although I do like these, I find the aerial roots latch onto the planks better than the uh, burlap. And I think that is mainly my problem. Uh, where I have these two is upstairs and I don't really, I guess, pay attention to them um, in regards to watering the burlap as much as I do with the wood planks. So I find that the aerial roots aren't, uh, I guess, latching onto or growing into the burlap as well as they are with the wood planks. You have to keep up on watering these almost like maybe every couple of days. You don't want the medium to dry out. Um, you want those roots to um, feel that moisture and then grow into the burlaps. So I'm just gonna take off this support and see if it actually, yeah. Well, actually this root up here has grown into the burlap. Okay, but it's not like latched onto. It was growing into it. You can see there is a little hole, a little divot. So there is one root, but now that I took it away from its support, it just kind of flopped off there. So I'm gonna have to secure that back up. So actually one root has grown into it. The golden pothos one is kind of getting a little out of control and it's actually growing away from the, uh, the burlap itself. So I have to secure that up there. The leaves on this one, they're getting a little bit larger, but not as, as large as I would expect them to be. And 
for this one in particular, I'm not only bad at keeping the burlap wet, I'm also terrible at watering this one. I don't know what it is. It's, it's kind of tucked behind a couple jade plants. It's really close to my south facing window, so it's getting a lot of light. It's kind of bleaching out, but I'm really underwatering this. There's been a few times where it's been kind of drooped over, so I think that might be an issue with the leaf size. So again, that's my fault. It has nothing to do with the uh, burlap itself, but I just have to keep a, a little bit more of a closer eye on this one. The only downside I found so far when watering it is it's not as wide uh, as the plank, so I do get a little bit of like overspray. So if you have like a plant table or something like that, or if you don't want to get the walls wet, then this is pretty much the only downside to this uh, burlap pole. But otherwise it, I guess you could just place the nozzle right on the burlap and just kind of let it drain down. It'll usually take a few times watering it before it accepts the moisture or the moisture holds onto it. Sometimes it's almost like a hydrophobic uh, property and it just sprays right off. But after a few waterings, uh, you'll notice that the, uh, the moisture is absorbed. I have one down on my Monstera there as well. Again, it's not really adhering to it as, as much as I would like, but honestly, I, I rarely water that. So I guess the nice thing with moss poles, if you have like a kind of a larger, chunkier uh, column, you can just put like a watering bottle or a bottle of water just on top and just let it uh, kind of drain down and, and soak through. Um, that I like about the moss pole, but I've never used it. I'd, you know, I, honestly, I would like to try one moss pole just to see how um, it grows in comparison to these other methods. But I'll show you one more that I have and then we'll talk about a couple more and that uh, will be pretty much it for this video. This is my Hoya Potsii and I have it on these little plastic trellises. So if you don't want, or if you don't care, like if a plant latches onto it, you just want it to grow upright. I bought these uh, little tr plastic trellises off of Amazon for pretty cheap. I think they came with like 15 or 16 for 20 bucks or something like that. And the nice thing is, is you can actually stack them so I'm just gonna rotate around. This plant is out of control. Um, it's already fallen on the floor once. It, these tendrils were actually um, kind of wrapped around another plant. I lost a leaf, it dumped some soil. Uh, it's been a disaster with this plant. But as you can see, these uh, trellises, they can stack. So if you have one uh, and you want it to extend it upwards, then you can just uh, add them together and they just kind of stack them up. So right now there's three trellises. I like the look I guess of this one in particular, because you can just wrap those tendrils, uh, those vines around and it just makes a nice full container of, uh, I primarily use these for Hoyas. I'm just trying to think if I've used them for anything else. I have some for uh, some smaller pothos plants that I'm trying to, uh, to train to go uh, upright as well, but I don't have them on the planks. So yeah, if you don't like the look of the plank, if you don't like the moss pole or burlap, um, these trellises, you can find them um, in plastic. You can uh, find metal ones, just kind of whatever your preference is. But this is another alternative to growing your plant upright. Uh, relatively cheap as well. Just go to Amazon. You can find them at the dollar stores and stuff too. So this is just a, a nice alternative um, to the moss pole and planks and that sort of thing. If you've never seen this material, this is coco coir. It is coconut husk. So the unused portion of the, like the exterior of the coconut is just kind of chopped up. You can find them in little chunks. You can find them in fibers. This is a very affordable, sustainable product compared to moss. The thing I don't like about moss as well is they basically destroy moss bogs, harvest it. And yeah, it, it I don't want to say destroys ecosystems, but it's probably not the most environmentally friendly. Whereas if you have a product like this, uh, it's basically the unused portion of a coconut and it is a very good soil amendment. Um, it can be used for those poles as well. The only thing that I've read about, um, I guess the downside of this, is they tend to hold onto or retain a lot of salt when they uh, first, I guess, are packaged. So if you are using a uh, coco coir pole or if you're using it for your house plants, just make sure that you thoroughly rinse it just to kind of leach out all those uh, excessive salts in the uh, in the material. Otherwise, they will uh, harm your plants over the long term, I guess. The one other, I guess, uh, alternative that uh, is really cost effective is actually bamboo. So mainly in the trellis form. So that's basically, I guess, the same type of thing as the plastic and metal. You can use uh, bamboo as a trellis as well. Just uh, tie it onto those and let your plants grow up. 
So I think that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. Let me know down in the comment section what you use for your houseplants to grow upright, whether it's the moss pole, uh, burlap, the planks, or just the regular old trellis. Let me know what you think of each of them, like the pros and cons, if you have any other information that I left out of this video as well. I always appreciate the comments. I love reading um, what you guys do for your houseplants as well. I learn from these comments and uh, the different practices that you guys do. So I really appreciate all the comments, um, all the time that you take to, uh, to write to me. So thanks, I appreciate the support. Take care everyone, bye.